Hey, it's Patrick from JMP Cycles, and let's talk fuel delivery, specifically carburetors and fuel injection setups. If you're looking to buy a motorcycle, if you're looking to buy your first motorcycle, or maybe even build a motorcycle, this is going to be pertinent information. Now, these things both do the same thing. They supply fuel to your motorcycle in, in order to get it to run and go down the road. They accomplish it pretty differently. Now, I will say if you want a more detailed look at carburetors, we do have some videos that break these down in more detail, specifically by make and model of carburetor. Generally speaking, most carburetors are kind of the same thing. You have a carb body, you have fuel being supplied to it by the fuel line, you have a choke cable. Now, the fuel is actually sucked through the carburetor just on the vacuum of your engine. There's no other, no other fancy stuff with this, that just kind of is what it is. Most of them have a slide or a throttle blade in there to get the air into the engine, and the fuel goes down here into a float bowl, which has a float in it that regulates the fuel in and out of the carburetor. Beyond that, it passes through a couple of jets, and that's how the fuel is supplied to your motorcycle. And they're cable driven. A couple of cables go up to your throttle, you twist that right hand, boom, you go down the road. Most of them only have about two jets. That's what actually regulates the flow of fuel into your motor when you're going down the road. Fuel injection is a bit more complicated. See this unit here, we have our manifold attached to it. Carburetors also have manifolds, but basically they just bolt the carb to the engine, whereas the manifold on a fuel injection setup here is a little more involved. They have a blade in there that's going to allow the air to come in the motor, but the fuel part of it gets a lot different. First of all, you're gonna have a fuel pump uh, that supplies fuel to these, actually pu pushing pressurized fuel to this throttle body. Most of the time, those fuel pumps are buried somewhere in your gas tank. That comes down here and is distributed to these two little injectors. Now the injector is actually electronically controlled by the ECM or ECU of your motorcycle that tells them how much fuel to squirt in there to run the motorcycle. This one here is cable driven, but most late model bikes nowadays are electronically driven throttles, meaning there's no cables anymore. So this is an electronically controlled throttle body meaning there are no cables. When you twist your wrist, it sends an electronic signal down here to open and close the throttle blade instead of having a cable. Beyond that, you're gonna see a bunch of sensors on here, map sensors, throttle position sensors, things like that, that send information back to that ECM to tell it again how much fuel to put in the motorcycle. Now, which one's the best? Well, that kind of depends on you. Let's break them down, pros and cons. Carburetors. Well, first off, pretty easy to work on, especially if you find yourself in like a roadside fix situation or you're gone somewhere and you need a part. Fix these pretty easy and they're pretty inexpensive to fix. You can change jets and there's a couple of jets in there. Pretty easy to figure out really. And they're upgradable. You can run a different air cleaner on this. You can actually get a bigger carburetor. You can change to an aftermarket carburetor. On the Harley side, you can get SNS carbs, Makuni carbs. You can get upgraded CV carbs. I mean, there's a lot out there. You can upgrade these things. What makes them not so great? It's pretty rudimentary system. So like I said, you have a slow jet and a main jet. So when you crack that throttle, it just kind of sprays that amount um, on the lower side of your RPM range and your throttle position and the higher RPM range. So there's only so much adjustment you can get with that carb. So it makes it not as efficient also. Also, you're not going to probably be able to make as much top end power with a carb as you could with fuel injection. So there are limitations. I was going to build a bike, I would probably build a bike with a carburetor. You don't have to have the um, ECMs and the wiring harnesses and injectors and things like that. Very simple unit carburetor, good thing to learn on. If you wanna learn how to work on your bike, a carburetor is actually not a bad place to start. Fuel injection, very, very tunable. So you can get aftermarket fuel injection controllers via Power Visions and Power Commanders and FP3s and uh, Thundermax units. You can run these things closed loop with wideband sensors that get you a very, very specific tune in all areas of your RPM and throttle position. You can get really specific with your tune. Beyond that, if you want to get bigger throttle bodies, bigger manifolds, again, more money but they, will, they, they do work very, very well. So if you wanna make a bunch of power, this is a good way to go if you're looking to make a bunch of power and they are more efficient. So they're not only going to make you more power, they're going to be more efficient doing it. You're gonna get probably better mileage than you will with the bigger carb and better power. If you're gonna start upgrading fuel injection system, um, fuel injection controllers can be kind of pricey. Also, you gotta build maps with this. If you don't have a dyno at home, you could be caught into the situation of taking it to a shop and having them build the map, that's a couple extra hundred bucks. 
you broke down on the side of the road, this is gonna be a lot more difficult to fix. Having said that, for the most part, these things are pretty bulletproof, but if you're out on the road somewhere and you have a bad injector, it's probably gonna be a lot harder to fix than if you just need a carburetor jet. So, there you have it. There's a ton of differences for your carb and your EFI setups. Hopefully this helped you make a good decision in your purchase. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop us a comment and go work on those motorcycles.